Good morning, everyone. My name is Ben Weinstein, and I'm happy to be here today to share with you some opportunities in ecological video analysis. I want to thank everyone for inviting me um, to the mannequin meeting. And although I wasn't able to attend live, um, I want to uh, thank everyone for the opportunity to share these tools I've been working on. And so the, the general challenge that we have uh, in tropical ecology is that many of the organisms we're interested in studying are rare and filming them is one uh, important opportunity and one important avenue to try to document species presence uh, and behavior. The challenge, of course, is that the animals that of interest often uh, are not on screen and we want to avoid wasting a huge amount of time by reviewing empty video. And so in about 2015, I started working on motion detection in ecological video. The essential idea is that we have some background model over time that's updated based on video conditions. There's some new current frame here, a butterfly has appeared. We're going to apply some function to that background model to produce some motion object based on user settings. And that was the first set of tools. We would call that motion detection. And so some of you may be familiar with my previous work, um, which was called Motion Meerkat. And that was essentially all that it did. You provided uh, different uh, inputs and you said, hey, I'm interested in finding frames that match those inputs um, with a given motion object. Uh, for the majority of use cases we'll talk about today, that'll be sufficient, but I want to introduce uh, Deep Meerkat, um, both because it has an installer for Mac and Windows now, as well as a couple uh, additional tools and speed things that make it very useful. Um, for those of you who have used Motion Meerkat before, the, the motion-based set of tools, um, I want to be clear that the two tools are, 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 are linked together. Uh, motion Meerkat lives inside of Deep Meerkat, so we're going to have this background model uh, computed inside. And then optionally, we might provide training data to say, yes, these are types of frames I'm interested in, and these are frames that are not, and that we're not interested in. This all started for me uh, when I was working on hummingbirds in Ecuador uh, in about 2010. And the traditional way of reviewing uh, uh, hummingbird plant interactions was to sit at a flower for two to three hours and record all visits that happen. This was incredibly difficult to scale and very challenging to uh, capture, especially for beginner observers. And so we started uh, using time-lapse cameras that take a photo every second, turned on at 6 a.m. and off at 6 p.m. And a snippet of video might look like this. So we have most of the frame here is empty, but all of a sudden a hummingbird visit might happen very quickly. And we want to identify those periods of time that a hummingbird visit occurs within 10 to 12 hours of video. And so Motion Meerkat was born out of this, and I found that hundreds of users we're interested in similar tools. I've continued to work uh, in this area, and uh, I'm happy to share to with you today uh, potential options uh, for mannequin uh, review that I've worked on in the last week or so, playing with some examples that were sent to me by users of this community. And so uh, all the tools I'll be talking about today are downloadable here on my website. Uh, this is me. I'm a postdoc at the University of Florida. And uh, when you click here, Windows or Mac, there's a brief set of a uh, survey that helps me understand your user needs. And in general, uh, the installation is fairly straightforward. For Mac, there's a couple little hitches that I'm happy to help with, but the install instructions should make it fairly clear. And so once you've installed Deep Meerkat, uh, the first thing we can do is open it up and look at our help screen. I guess I'll close this and do that again. So here we can go to, I can open it up and it has a little icon and it'll boot. And there it is. And so the first thing we're going to do is select a file. Um, I'm not going to do that at first just to show you the default settings. The first thing you should always do is check whether the defaults work. And so Deep Meerkat uh, contains a default uh, hummingbird video that just sits inside of it, just so you can confirm that everything's working correctly. So if you just hit run, you should see that the classification model will load. It takes about a minute or so. Um, and then there'll be an output directory. While that runs, I'll show the rest of the user functionality. And so the videos that were sent to me uh, by the mannequin community expand on a, a lot of different challenges. And so I want to go through a couple different uh, videos about what would work well and what would work uh, not as well. Just pointing out here that while I've been talking, the model has moved towards complete and should be done in a matter of seconds. There we go. So we had an input file, uh, which was actually the default. It tells us the runtime. It said that, hey, I found five frames of interest. And we can go to that output folder here. There's hummingbirds. And we can see that we were able to correctly find those five frames of interest. It also has a couple different uh, devices that will help us uh, 
look for the time, the clock, the bounding box coordinate, and the machine learning score in this particular case. But returning to the mannequin videos that I were sent, I want to show a couple different ones and talk about um, videos that would be useful to use DMeerkat on versus videos that would not be useful. Um, and so uh, starting with the best case scenario are videos that look like this that was sent to me by one of your users. So let's talk about what's great about this video. It's well-centered. There is a clear object of interest uh, location. And uh, there's relatively little background movement uh, in terms of uh, overlapping leaves or other things that would keep the motion detection algorithm from working properly. And if we slide through here, even with a little bit of uh, gray screen, which was apparently on some hardware issue there, the Mode Meerkat will have no problem with that. And we can jump through and we can see that somewhere in here are some objects of interest. And you can see even within a 15 minute clip, it's already annoying to look and try to find those objects. Here we are, um, some swallowtail mannequin, perhaps. Um, and so here we are uh, looking at, at, at the objects of interest. And so the goal of Deep Meerkat would be to find these objects of interest. Um, and in this particular case, create a video clip um, based on the motion detection um, uh, to say, these are the parts of the video that I want to review by hand. So let's go, how do we go about doing that? That's 0211 Sleeco. So let's go back, we can restart. And we can select here, this, this lived in my Dropbox folder uh, under mannequin. Here's that video. I can press select. I'm gonna go to the advanced settings because I've, I've uh, dialed in a couple helpful things um, for uh, this particular use case. I'm gonna say motion detection only because I haven't trained a, motion, uh, a, mater a machine learning model yet. And here I'm gonna output some video clips because I think that best fits the ecological use case for the mannequins. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna leave these settings um, empty for right now. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to press run. Or I would press run if I hadn't already run this before. A video like this probably will take about 10-15 minutes to run, about equal to the runtime, a little slower or a little faster depending on the frame rate. Um, but I ran this video already once here. And so we can see uh, there's an output name folder which matches the file name. And we can see that the uh, defaults found two uh, clips. The naming of the clips, again, is that file name. And then here with the underscore, that's the uh, minutes, seconds, and uh, sorry, sorry, that's our minute seconds. Oh, there we go, yeah. The file name had a, a period in there, which confused me. That is hour zero, minute 14, seconds, nine seconds. So in the 14th minute and nine seconds is our first clip. We can click on that. off screen, excuse me. There we go. And we can see at first there's a little bit of motion there. But what's going to happen here is at the end of the clip, an animal is going to appear. And what's happened here is that I've combined clips based on their duration. Actually, that clip's empty. Let's try the second clip. So I always try to be conservative for users because it's important that users feel like we're capturing everything. So in this entire 15 minute video, um, this was the major clip of interest. And so we were able to reduce that 15 minute video down to two potential clips, one which did have motion of interest and one which had motion not of interest. Um, again, I think it's worthwhile to be conservative wherever possible, such that users feel like they're capturing all potential motion objects um, within reason. And so uh, the settings could be tweaked a little bit so that you'd only get this clip back. But in general, I find users uh, prefer to review just a little bit more extraneous data to make sure they feel confident that their time was well served in setting up these cameras. One thing I want to point out is, uh, so there clearly is some uh, absence of motion here or times in those clips where nothing's happening. What I've done is said if two clips uh, are within about 20 seconds, I think it's 25 seconds of each other, combine them into one clip. And this is helpful for uh, video review. Um, these numbers can be changed uh, if interested. And so uh, I've said, uh, any clip within about 25 seconds combined. And I think the smallest possible clip duration was about two seconds. So if there's motion, but it's, if it's for less than two seconds, don't limit that clip to file. And this is a useful way of reducing that 15 minutes of video just down to the essential parts of the day that we're interested in. Uh, you can't quite see, I'm, I'm pulling off screen. I'll make it smaller. But I was jumping around a little bit to see. And at the end here, the animals should hopefully leave. And so that should match up with our, our expectations. 
Um, Deep Meerkat also provides a bit of a parameters file that helps you look at the frame processing rate. Here was about 25 frames per second. Um, the number of actual motion frames found, which is about 10% of the video, and some of the default sizes that help us um, uh, parameterize that video. The other thing I want to point out, which is quite useful, is if you have a directory full of videos, you can specify just the entire directory, and Deep Meerkat will search through and get all of the videos there. I won't run this because it would be quite computationally intensive for this little uh, video clip. But here, notice that I've added a directory that says Google Cloud Mannequin. And when I press run, it's going to look through, and it's going to look through all the videos. I found eight videos and was going to run all of them simultaneously. Uh, I'm actually going to quit out of this, um, force quit out of this to make sure that this doesn't run because it wouldn't be really appropriate as I upload to YouTube. So we're just going to go here to Activity Monitor and make sure that nothing was running as I killed that. Yeah, let's make sure that this is a force quit. It's worthwhile. Because of the parallel nature of some of the video processing, it's worth uh, checking a, a force quit uh, when you close a Deep Meerkat unexpectedly while you're during a run. Sometimes there'll be a couple processes which aren't cleaned up as well as we would like. Um, I want to also just show in the last few minutes uh, a couple different videos uh, that don't work as well or options that are a little bit more challenging. And so uh, going through some of the videos that were sent to me, um, and we can talk about why some videos work versus others are, are, are a little more challenging. Um, in general, Deep Meerkat and Motion Meerkat uh, is not a panacea. It needs uh, good camera settings, and it needs uh, ways that work within um, sort of reasonable expectations. And so let's jump to a couple more challenging videos. Let's see, how about this thing? So this video was successful. I want to point out that it, that there are a couple uh, uh, challenges with this particular video. Notice again the gray uh, uh, hardware framing. There must be something happening with the hardware setup that's that's on the camera recording. A couple different things here that are interesting. Um, you can't quite see it in this part of the video, but there's definitely a person sitting behind the camera actually shaking the camera a little bit. So obviously because we don't have a motion detection model that uh, screens for any particular kinds of motion, those kind of events are going to trigger clips. Now, if there are less than two seconds in duration, there won't be a clip constrained, um, created, excuse me, but uh, it's still not ideal. The animals of interest here, I believe, are a little bit later in the clip. Let's try to find them. There they are. Let's go back a little bit. So these are, it looks like white rough mannequins. And uh, even objects this distance will work just fine. I believe I've run this video as well. So let's go check the results here. This was big easy for June 723. So I believe I've already run this video. So I have to hear Deep Meerkat. I believe I had it under here, Mannequin, Big Easy. And so we can look at a couple of the clips here. Forgive me, it starts creating off screen. And so we were able to reduce that entire video into four clips, um, probably a total of about one minute long. As I said, there is uh, someone behind the video actually literally moving it, so that created some false clips here. But in general, I think that's not usually a problem. People want to review a little bit more data. Let's go and see if we can find the mannequins of interest here. And there they are. So we can see this clip again was pretty successful in reducing the amount of video that needed to be reviewed just to find our object of interest. And just in the last minute, I want to show a video that's a little bit more challenging um, that wasn't quite as successful, uh, and that will be enough for right now. So if we go here, Google Cloud and Mannequins, I believe it was this guy. Yeah. So actually, this video is very hard to see, but our object of interest is actually right there. Uh, here's a mannequin sitting right there, and it'll move around a little bit. There he is again. And so I want to point out that um, this is probably too difficult for the motion detection of Deep Meerkat um, because there's a huge objects of interest. There's potential motion everywhere. Um, and so it's not a complete panacea. It, it can't work like magic. And so we have to make sure that we set up our hardware in the best possible way. 
I hope this has been helpful and I'm around to take questions. Thank you very much.